Welcome everybody to a special show here on the O'Shea Vlogcast channel. Again, I apologize. I am without my mic. I ordered a new one for whatever reason. The good old Yeti uh, wanted to put a nigga down today, but the show is going to go on. We have a great show tonight and even a greater guest. Today's topic, we're talking about developing an empowerment culture for black men, in which I feel um, is a great topic. I was talking about this to Man of Tomorrow. We'll be on a little bit later. But I just want to introduce um, a brother who I collaborated with about two to three weeks ago, a brother who reached out to me that is a, that is a writer. Um, and he did a really, really, really wonderful job on the main O'Shea Duke Jackson channel. Did an excellent job on the presentation. And some of you remember that particular podcast that I did with a brother named Wayman Brown. You might see him um, in the chat section during the live streams. But I just want to, um, to thank him for the topic. It was a suggestion. And I want to let him lead off tonight with the, uh, a topic called Developing an Empowerment Culture for Black Men. So I want to introduce to some and present to others, Wayman Brown. What's going on, brother? What's going on, Shay, man? I'm definitely happy to be on a second time. Honored to be here. And uh, thank you so much for having me again, bro. A lot of good reception from that last one. And I appreciate everybody that tuned in and has so much uh, positive feedback and everything. So I'm happy to be here again tonight. Well, let me let me ask you about the positive feedback. The first show that we did, uh, did anybody get in contact with you, brother, and, and like kind of talk to you about what was going on or? Uh, well, you know what? Uh, me and Deep in Thought, we had a had a little exchange. I know he, you know, he's from Buffalo too. I definitely got to touch base with that brother. Uh, we're on Facebook now, and uh, a couple other people, you know, they they came through and liked the Facebook page, and really, uh, mostly people from my own network, uh, people who saw the stream or or saw the restream rather. So it was some really really good feedback, man. But um, in the comment section and everything, I think people benefited from it. And, you know, my goal is always to to find ways to make improvements with things. So I'm definitely uh, geared up to do that tonight, even though we're going to be taking it to a, a little bit of a different direction with uh, thinking about what we can do as a group or, you know, uh, as pockets, so to speak, throughout this country instead of just individually. But I'm definitely excited about this tonight, though. OK, OK, good. Let me let me just ask you um, just this. For those of you who don't don't know you. Um, let's talk about, you know, your blog, um, what makes you interested in, in some of the, the, the concerns of the black manosphere, um, and just things like that as far as short introduction. Right. So my blog is called the Esquire project.com. Um, for those who didn't get an opportunity uh, to listen to the original stream that we did a few weeks ago, uh, it was one that I started originally back in 2012, uh, had some ups and downs with it in terms of just trying to figure out the direction that I wanted to go. I'm a writer. So originally it was kind of like a creative uh, sort of a blog and for people who are more artistic, but then at the same time, entrepreneurial. And then over time, uh, as I kind of found my way with the blog, I decided uh, really over the course of the summer to gear more towards personal development, specifically for black men and uh, to help us be more self enterprising. So uh, largely influenced by the Negro Manosphere, largely influenced by Black YouTube, of course, by you, O'Shea. And um, really, I just saw myself being able to uh, have a place, really, with my writing in, in a much more specific market and much more specific niche. I am a Black man, so to be able to identify with uh, our needs and our concerns, of course, is extremely important. And I just saw it as, as an opportunity for me to really uh, be of a good influence among my peers. And so I'm, I'm redirecting and repurposing a lot of my content for that. And, of course, making new content um, it's, it's a lot. Of course, as you know, when you're doing stuff, especially on your own starting out, but I'm definitely dedicated to it. So that's where we are with things right now with the EsquireProject.com. OK, OK, cool, cool. No, and, and you're definitely a really good writer. You write some uh, very uh, uh, great and detailed uh, pieces um, from what I did see. So hopefully we can get you over on Negro Manosphere and get some of your services over there. Um, but but let me kind of get into, you know, the, the last topic that we did was building the um, designing the unstoppable black man, which was a really, really great topic. And today we're talking about developing an empowerment culture for black men. Why is this such a concern and, and what made you come up with this particular idea for this topic today? 
Right. So, you know, this is something that's been on my mind uh, for a while. Culture plays such a large part in human organization and, and human advancement. And recently, of course, you know, you've had a number of different streams talking about things that we can do as black men to work together. And, you know, when you think about it, just our, the general perception about black men, uh, you've heard it before, we're expendable in America, at least that's the way that we're viewed. Um, you know, we're not a protected group, as you've mentioned on different streams. Really, we, we pretty much all we got. Um, you know, if you think about it, and this is kind of a little bit of a joke, but if there was an announcement that said all black men 18 and over are making an exodus from the U.S. over the next decade, you know, some of the first concerns from other groups would be the demise of athletic dominance and competitiveness in sports entertainment, the end of an era of easily accessible, gratifying sex partners and less monetary support for young black children. You know, those are kind of like the things that we kind of get known for. Basketball, baby daddies and being good lovers. And I'm not saying, of course, that, <laughs> you know, I'm not saying that that's all we are. But and, and, and that makes up a section of us. And of course, we know we have a lot of brothers who are doing their thing and uh, going to work and uh, being a positive influence. But just the general perception of us, you know, how you can think of other groups as this group is industrious. This group is uh, studious mm -hmm. with black men. By and large, uh, you know, that's not necessarily the way that we're perceived as a whole. And because of that overall stereotype that is among us, you know, we can kind of internalize that. And uh, there's been enough of a frequency over decades where some of our negatives have trumped a lot of our positives. Mm -hmm. uh, so I believe really it's the time to talk about a national, specifically a national empowerment culture for black men, uh, which to me means that black men are working in critical mass to progress through life with confidence and strength and that they have the faith that they can control their own general quality of life because they've made the self-investment, they have the network and they have the intangible tools to do so. Um, let me get onto the last part, you know, self-investment, network and tools. Uh, I wanna come back to that, but let me talk about uh, the our cohort are uh, the other group, black women. Why do you think that black women have this particular empowerment culture, black girls rock, you know, they have, you know, many websites, many blogs and many things. Why do you think that that kind of culture for black women is much more stronger than it is for black men? You know, I believe that women generally, uh, almost naturally, I could almost say, they have a tendency to to stick together. Um, you know, for all it's worth, you'll hear females be kind of very flaky with each other. A lot of times one day, you know, they could be best friends and a week later they can't stand each other. You know, next week is their roommates. And then after that, they don't want to have nothing to do with each other. But at the same time, despite a lot of the ups and downs that they can go through, I think they're very good at co-signing for each other and at basically being a support system for each other a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Um with men, you know, we're very independent and we're, you know, I, I know I mentioned on the uh, previous show, we're kind of like islands. We don't necessarily, we can kind of operate by ourselves for a very long period of time. Um, and I think that women, they tend to, they tend to be able to find things that they need uh, from each other and be able to create some sort of sense of bonding or community around those things. So, you know, that that is a big up to them uh, on the strength that they can do that. And um, they, they find a way to celebrate their successes, no matter how large or small. But I think it really comes down more or less to feeling a need. And with black men, we don't really necessarily feel a need like that uh, or sometimes even a desire that much to be like that with each other um, by and large. So I think that's that's one of the reasons why, you know, that that black girl rocks culture, et cetera, is something that's a strength for them. But let me let me ask you this. Why don't you feel that black men, because you, you said that we don't feel that we have a need or desire to develop that same empowerment culture. Um, other groups of men seem to have this sort of empowerment culture, especially um, I've talked about it previously before when it comes to like Turkish men, Arab men. Um, I was just recently in Uganda. I see this with the Indian men, wherever they're at. Um, but why don't you feel that black men, we don't feel the need or the desire to have that? Right. 
Uh, you know, for one thing, when you think about our culture, just over the decades, uh, you know, it's been ripped apart. That's the one thing that other groups generally have over us, you know, out of a lot of things, but they still have their culture intact to a certain extent. Um, ours has been ripped apart, it's been shredded, and pretty much we're, we're basically left to ourselves to try to, as, as black men, to kind of just make it on our own and do what we got to do. Um, one thing I also noticed, though, is that, and this isn't even so much a comparison uh, to other groups, but I think just something that I notice among black men is that we can have a bit of a disdain for other black men in particular. Uh, I think that some of the reasons, you know, it can go back to maybe you didn't get a chance to redeem yourself from, from that dude that punched you in the face when you were 11 years old. Maybe you didn't get a chance to uh, have that conversation with your father that you always wanted to have. Uh, maybe you didn't get a chance to confront a certain black man about a certain thing uh, that you always wanted to to get off your chest. And I think over time, there's just a, a very high level of resentment that black men have against each other. And, uh, you know, we're quick to just kind of be dismissive as a group. You know, we get uh, perhaps offended, not necessarily disrespected, uh, but maybe if we just, you know, it's something that we ain't really feeling about another black man, maybe his delivery, his style, his approach, even if we believe that it could be well-intended. And we're very quick to write each other off, I think, in a lot of circumstances. So it kind of leaves us to, you know, like what I mentioned in the uh, previous interview uh, of kind of wanting to be that one. But in this instance, you just kind of have that. I'm going to just make it on my own, do what I got to do, you know, uh, with or without anybody. And I think that that's just something that as time goes on, we're going to start seeing that we are going to have to turn to each other a little bit more. Um, we are going to have to respect each other's differences and be able to uh, help amplify each other's strengths. So those are just a couple of reasons why I think it's, it's kind of difficult for black men to work together and, uh, and to really feel that we need each other and we should deal with each other. Let me kind of get to this because you're bringing up some good points and we'll get to the majority of the topic. But um, you talked about this thing that a lot of black men have for other black men. Now, I'm not taking this time to pat myself on the back, but I've noticed in most black YouTube circles, um, a lot of men cannot get along. Um, and that's just in, on black YouTube in, in general. I think on my channels, the, the culture is a lot more positive and it's a lot more better for brothers to kind of gravitate to. Um, but, but again, let's talk about this disdain for other black men um, that a lot of brothers have, because certainly, in order for us to develop um, some type of empowerment culture for us as a group, especially for African-American men, how do we deal with this disappointment that many of us have for one another, this disdain, this particular anger? What is it that black men can do in your opinion to sort of get over it so that we can trust each other so that we can do things together to, be to better us as a group? Well, I think a large part of it is uh, starting where you can um, with with black men. So if if the bridges haven't been burned that severely mm -hmm. and we all have our own different things that we know, you know, among men, of course, as a group, we have those, we have that man code. You know, we have that things that we know that are just completely unacceptable. But then we also have those things that are just uh, that kind of rub me the wrong way. And then we also have those things that are kind of borderline, like, yeah, I can look past it, but I'm choosing not to. I think that one of the things that would be a really big key is, first of all, I think it's reasonable to think about other instances in which you tolerated being treated less than you deserve from people who are not black men and how you responded to that. So, for an example, when you really think about the dealings that you may have had with women over the years, you know, some of the things that you may have tolerated, disrespect. Now, of course, we know we don't expect as much from women as we do from other men. You know, we understand that men and women are very different. But when you just think about it, you know, I think it's important for us to kind of ask ourselves, why is it that I can forgive all these other people? Why can I forgive my employer uh, for probably talking down to me? Could be a white man, uh, a white woman for that matter. Why is that I can I can look past this girl who you know, may have did 101 things that was kind of grimy to me over the years or these different groups of people. But when it comes to my brother, 
I don't have that same sort of empathy. Uh, so I think one thing is just to kind of think about things in a much more reasonable way in that, in, in those terms, uh, just in terms of looking at things that you've already tolerated and then stopping and asking yourself, what is about this black man that doesn't allow me to do the same thing? And is say, it reasonable? Say it again. That say that last part again. I think you're really hitting on something with that, brother. Go ahead, say it again. Right. I think I think it's important to really think about it and say, OK, what is it about this black man that doesn't allow me mm -hmm. to move past it and basically try to build with this brother or at least be on decent terms with him? Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's something to it, man. And maybe it's the thing of the fact that black men are probably our closest competition uh, that could have something to do with it as well. Mm -hmm. but I, I really do think that if brothers really saw if it's really a decision, it's a decision to choose to say, I'm going to look for the best in a person, just like in any other situation in life, or it's a decision to choose to say, I'm not going to immediately get emotional about something. Um, you know, you could even think about different things. You have to be empathetic. Say for an example, it might be a brother that you want to touch base with, correspond with, maybe you want to do some networking with him. Uh, you know, something as simple as his response in an email could be enough to drive a lot of brothers away. You know, he maybe he didn't come off as welcoming as you thought he should have. Maybe you had some sort of an ideal in your mind of how things should have went or maybe via another in-person conversation for that matter. And something that simple can be the thing that makes one black man not even want to deal with another black man just because of that. Not realizing that you've probably been yelled at, screamed at. At, at jobs that probably paid you anywhere from minimum wage to slightly higher, broke your spirit, made you feel like nothing, uh, dealt with all types of situations. But then when it comes to a personality class, something that simple, mm -hmm. maybe a person has a little bit of a different style. Maybe you didn't think they could have been kind of tired when they were speaking with you or they had a lot of things going on. So I think that us just, you know, kind of being stronger and being more empathetic and being more understanding and most importantly, actually having a conversation having conversations where you can, where there is room for repair, where there is room to make things better, where there is room to clear up misunderstandings, or, you know, you'd be surprised a lot of times, not, you know, you necessarily, but just in general, of course, uh, it, 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 so much can be done with just a simple conversation. So much can be done with just saying, listen, man, let me highlight you for a minute, bro. I just want to, you know, let you know that this is how I kind of took this. Mm -hmm. And something mm -hmm. that simple could be cleared up within a matter of minutes instead of harboring so much stark animosity and resentment towards another black man for such a long period of time. And then again, you have those situations where some things, you know, some people have crossed the line too far where they went beyond the boundary that they were supposed to. And you know what those situations are. But by and large, I think every day, generally speaking, we're not really necessarily running into that altogether. So just being more understanding, more empathetic, communicating, and then seeing our brothers as valuable is a good entry point. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you mentioned the point, um, damn, and it was a good, I should have wrote it down, but you, 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 you mentioned this, you know, idea of discussing um, our differences with one another. Um, and, and, and also, let, let's kind of talk about that because a lot of times we we don't want to clear things up, you know, to kind of mm -hmm. see where the brother is coming from, especially, you know, dealing with us. We're so kind of quick to kind of attack one another. To kind of to take me by that real quick before we kind of get into that, because I think a lot of brothers kind of fail to realize that because a lot of times in our situations, we can kind of, we're kind of too afraid to say, Hey, you know what you did or what you said? It rubbed me the wrong way. Um, what did you mean by that? Can you clarify why that happened instead of automatically kind of assuming? Let's talk about that a little bit more detail because I think you hit on a really good point. Right. You know, just I think the the fear of the reaction is a lot of times uh, something that gets in the way it is a lot of times what is a hindrance in being able to have those conversations. How am I going to sound? How am, you know, I going to come across, how am I going to come across as going being vulnerable? You know, am I going to get, uh, <laughs> you know, basically am I going to be mocked for it? Uh, will I be ridiculed for it? Will I be looked at as soft? 
those are really fears and, and they're legitimate concerns because the way that we generally react to each other and the way we are as men in general, that masculinity can come off, you know, really tough sometimes. And I think that as we kind of mature as men, we don't really mind necessarily uh, being a little bit more vulnerable. You know, we can have those conversations saying, listen, bro, uh, you know, the other day when you mentioned this or, or when that happened, you know, I kind of didn't know where you were coming from with that. I just wanted to ask you about that. Right. And when you have other level headed men that you can have that conversation with, the easier it'll be for, to have that conversation. And one of the most beautiful things about men working together is that we get along so well once we know that no disrespect was really intended. Mm -hmm. No disrespect plus a sincere apology is enough to clear up a lot of things among men. Because it's not really necessarily going to be that complex. It's not like you're dealing with, you know, a female or you're dealing with something. It's, it's like this is another man. And typically we operate on principles. So mm -hmm. while there's no real violation of certain principles, then we can get past things if we just decide to communicate. But we have to have that willing attitude to want to do that. And I just really touch real quickly, uh, O'Shea, controlling our attitude is huge because I'll even use myself for an example. Um, you know, one of my friends... I think about some different times that, uh, you know, we were supposed to get up and do some stuff, work on work on a couple of things business wise. And I remember it was a few different occasions where he had to cancel on me. And it was kind of like a like a last minute thing. Now, I'm really big on, you know, I don't I mean, nobody likes to be canceled on. But of course, right. you have to understand people have situations and things like that. But I remember thinking just because I felt as though my time wasn't necessarily being honored. I had to check myself because I immediately, you know, well, not immediately, but after maybe the third time, fourth time, started to have a certain type of an attitude without even having a conversation first with him to let him know, thinking like, man, you know, he just do it ain't serious. He ain't really trying to get nothing done. But then, right. you know, I was able to clear that up. And here right. it is. I was about to overlook all these positive qualities within another black man over something that could have been, you know, just a two, three minute conversation. And listen, man, my bad. You know, I got to be more mindful of that. So right. I think just us choosing in the first place not to take everything personal and not to just, you know, get in our feelings, so to speak, is is huge for us. Let me um, do this. Guys, I have 166 people watching right now the show. Uh, we have a really wonderful guest on, a brother who is coming on for the second time. I would appreciate all of you brothers to like the video. Um, we'll talk about a little bit more about his blog. But again, you know, like I said, we're just bringing the brother into this sector of the manosphere to bring in the new talent. So you, you all need to like the video. The brothers dropping some some gems. You know what I mean? It's it's free to like the video. So this is a show particularly for us as a group of black men in America in the Western world. So at least you can do is like the video while you're coming in and listen to the show. Let's kind of get into some of your hypotheses when, when developing an empowerment culture. Um, what are some of the things, you know, because I don't know if you want to go one through, you know, one through a hundred, A through whatever. Let's talk about certain your certain points that you want to hit on for brothers that are listening today. What should we start off as far as developing the power of culture for brothers? I think what's really important in any sort of an undertaking is to first is to manage expectations. Uh, mismanaged expectations is the beginning of disappointment. So what I mean by that is that in us developing or reshaping ourselves as a group, we have to understand a few things before we even move, which is to me, just a couple of things that come to mind. Not every black man is going to be on board with the development of an empowerment culture for black men. Uh oh, uh -oh. And uh -oh. Also, say, say, say it again, say it again, brother, say it again. Right. Not every black man is going to really be on board with the development of an empowerment culture for black men. And not every black man is going to share the same theories among other black men as to what an empowerment culture is exactly and how to go about establishing an empowerment culture for black men. Mm -hmm. But I do believe that there are some sort of baseline things or uh, principal things overall that can just help us out substantially. Okay. And one of the things that comes to mind is the importance of being able to develop a, an empowerment culture in critical mass. Now, in most social dynamics, critical mass is really important. But what I'm going to refer to it here as being is, for our purposes, 
we're talking about black men who are reshaping ourselves culturally in critical mass, meaning that there's a sufficient number of brothers or there's an, at least enough placement of brothers uh, nationally participating in the transformation of an empowerment culture for black men. And it has to be enough and consistent enough that catches momentum to get a movement going. Because once you can get a movement going, then future growth can essentially kind of take a life of its own. So in order for, uh, for brothers to kind of reshape the culture among black men, our practices, they have to resonate with us as a group and they also have to be sustainable. Now, I also think it's important to realize that there are a lot of positive attributes of black culture already. Uh, for example, we don't have to destroy black culture uh, or anything like that. I look at this more or less as kind of revamping. Uh, when you think about it, we kind of have a natural ability to see each other as extended family. That allows us to interact with each other in a very familiar way. You know, you know how it is when you go over a barbecue. It could be a friend of yours, road to their family reunion. You don't even know people. You already get an invitation. Man, go over there and grab you a plate. Go over there and get you a beer. We have that very familial sort of uh, vibe with each other a lot of times. When we give each other debt, we give each other a pound. We don't have to practice it or rehearse it. We just know. Mm -hmm. We can use those sort of things that are familiar to us already to strengthen our culture. Uh, even the, the hustle mentality that a lot of brothers have. You know, the, the thought of brothers liking the idea of having five, six different things going on. You know, uh, man, you know I'm working here. You know I got some property over there. You know I'm doing this. You know I'm doing that. We don't necessarily have to adopt other types of uh, cultural components such as I just live, you know, making $200,000 a month in passive income. That's beautiful to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's great. And that should always be a, a very uh, defined goal to be able to generate wealth where you don't have to exchange your time for money. But I think from a cultural perspective, what resonates with us is I can go get it. I can hustle and cash flow. That's an example of something that we can actually use to our strength that is going to resonate with a lot of brothers because it also helps us to be more industrious as well. And it makes us improvisational economically. So overall, I just believe that our strengths have to be exemplified and supported with other complementary attributes and carried out with, with some sort of tradition, some sort of customary practice that becomes a regular thing that we become known for. OK, no, I, I definitely agree. Let me let me kind of get back to some of the other points, though. Um. I think that's kind of hard for a lot of brothers to understand that we manage expectations. I want to kind of get to some of the things that you talked about previously. Not every black man is going to be with developing empowerment culture. And we're not going to share the same ideas. Now, I'm pretty sure you heard my Sunday Rumble show that we have, where we have different brothers that have different ideas uh, on different ideas in the black community. Sometimes it can get real ugly. Um, how do we deal with, you know, some of the brothers that, that have different ideas? For example, like, you know, there's a brother, uh, George, that, that wrote in the chat. He said, uh, uh, will we be marrying black and recreating the black family in this culture? Now, to somebody like myself, that has nothing to do with mm -hmm. developing an empowerment culture for black men. That's that's that has nothing to do with that, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I, I, but but again, you have brothers that have a different ideas outside, or you know, kind of whatever. How do we how do we work within brothers that may have like a, 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 a another goal? Because let's be honest. Let me just say this real quick, and you know this, Wayne. Man. A lot of times when, 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 people, when we want to do things for black men as a group, a lot of black men are not used to black men putting themselves first and their needs and desires first. What they're used to is what black men should immediately be doing for other people in the community at, instead of what black men should be doing for themselves first. So how do we deal with a lot of black men who are not used to this new kind of attitude that black men are kind of being a little bit more selfish with their time, with their needs and desires, and other brothers who still don't believe that and kind of feel that maybe black men should be doing more for the communities instead of more for themselves? How do we get around it? I think a key ingredient is to really look at things where they are. So for example, you just mentioned with Brother George. I see Brother George in the chat a lot. I always appreciate his commentary. Mm -hmm. And 
he said something a few weeks ago that stuck out to me. I can't remember exactly which stream it was, but I remember um, you had, you know, different people on the panel uh, weren't necessarily in agreement with him about whatever this topic was or this point was. But he said something that just stuck to me. And I remember I don't want to misquote him, but essentially he was basically saying that when it comes to women, for example, you know, that person that you want may not really be that person that's for you. That that may not be the person that is, is supposed to be a part of your destiny. So something that simple, I chose no matter what commentary I hear from any other brothers that I may agree with or disagree with, whether it be anybody, brother George, anybody, you know, I agree and disagree and, and have different views on different things. But I chose to focus on that. I chose to focus on the things that I actually see eye to eye on or things that can actually help mm -hmm. me, the things mm -hmm. that actually touch me somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important because everybody is going to take a different direction. So, for example, I know it's very important to Brother George, from what I see in the chat, to, to make sure that the black family is thoroughly established. And what's interesting is even a year ago this time, O'Shea, I was really super heavy and I still am into Powernomics, uh, the book. And some of the first thoughts in my mind where, yes, what he's saying in the most ideal fashion, I 100% agree with it. If we can have the what's more beautiful than black families building, what's more beautiful than actual, uh, you know, infrastructure that's, that's in place, a black society of, of, of strong black people. That would be amazing. Um, like you said as well, an empowerment culture for black men specifically addresses the need for black men. So I'm really, you know, over and even over this past year, I've decided, you know what, I'm going to just be focused on helping brothers live their best life, however they see fit. If you see fit doing that um, with a black woman, do it with a black woman. If you see fit doing that outside your race, you know, whether it's my thing or it ain't my thing, I don't knock you for it. But I think that what he says is very important when you're talking about actually building a black community, because at that point, we have to start looking at who we're procreating with at mm -hmm. that point, you know, is, is more of a strength in numbers thing, you know, but if we're talking, you know, kind of saying, you know, I'm, I'm tired of not putting myself first. I'm tired of being stressed out and never getting a chance to really vent, never get a chance to uh, really express myself dying at 45 from a heart attack because I put everybody else's needs ahead of my own. Right. I'm tired of doing that. And when you take that approach, you're going to have a different perspective on, you know, mate selection, things like that. And that's the approach that I'm really interested in now is helping black men individually and collectively make the decisions for themselves. What's mm -hmm. going to help them lead their best, their best life. And then all these other things, the women, et cetera, you know, those, those are, uh, those are kind of like auxiliary things, you know, exactly. but, but to his, but to his point, yes, community wide, you talk about building a black community, neighborhoods and all that. Yeah. We need to see that. But if we're talking about, look, we got to start where we are, which is realistically, no, we haven't aggregated all of our funds yet to the point where we can have our own independent economy. Uh, we haven't organized ourselves yet to the point where, uh, sociopolitically we can move, but you know, what we can do, we can say, you know what, brothers are tired of being tired and let's just help each other live our best life. Let's be a resource to each other. Let's build each other up and let the chips fall to where they may and let everybody let play their role in the development of that. And don't knock the next man. Don't knock brother George. Uh, don't knock anybody for doing things that they want to do in the way that they want to do it. But at the same time, being open-minded towards everybody's uh, intention of mm -hmm. trying to advance the black man. Mm -hmm. No, no, I, I agree. Let me, before I get to the super chats, let me say this. Um, and I, I made the case last night on the panel. I'm going to reiterate my case. Um, you brothers out there are always, some of you guys are looking to include women in the conversations that are for men. When women make conversations about what they need to do for themselves, they do not include men. That's what Black Girls Rock is about when they have their TV shows and they're doing stuff like that. Um, they don't care about how you feel, what it's about, all these other things. The reason why Black men don't get anywhere in the power of the manosphere is because the manosphere is about Black men. It, it, it has nothing to do with children, or black kids, or none of that. That's not what this is about. I think there are other sectors that deal in that. I don't deal in that primarily. As you have said, 
Brother Wayman Brown, I deal in that as an auxiliary. But I am a black male first advocate. I don't care anything about the other shit. And the reason why is because black men are not a protected group. We have to deal with our issues as we are primarily, not on the behalf of women or the behalf of none of that shit. It's on the behalf of brothers first. Black males needs, desires, wants first. And some of you black men are not even used to somebody telling you that you should put yourself first. That, that don't even that don't even make to most black men, they're so used to being walking mats for black for the black America. They're not used to that. It's it's something that they're not even used to hearing. But I'm first. I mean, I was in Kenya, uh, to be honest. Uh, and we can get back to this. I was in Nairobi for four days. I was awarded my the guy that was taking us around. I said, brother, um, you know, Kenya is Nairobi is is doing you know very well. I said, tell me, where are there any, can I find magazines for Kenyan men or podcasts for Kenyan men? He says, what are you talking about? There's nothing like that. So I'm in one of the most developing countries in Africa. And GDP is growing, development's growing, and nothing is there for them as a group of men. That's shame. That's shameful. Even in Nigeria, that's a shame. So again, this has nothing to do with anything else other than developing an empowerment culture for black men, not for the black family, not for black children, none of that. We don't, we deal in manosphere ideas. And for some people, that's hard for you to get understand. That's why this is the black manosphere. And uh, a, a lot of y'all are not going to be able to understand that. And it's a tough pill to swallow. But that's why we deal on that. Let me just get back to this. Uh, 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 shout out to Big J, Triple X. Why, why did y'all time him out, man? He didn't do that. This is why I am original minister over black minister. This is his opinion. Uh, he be support. Shout out to black, uh, to Big J, XX. Let me kind of give a, a shout out to a few people here. Um, Brother Xanathos Clutch. He donated five dollars. The key word is black men, empowerment, empower us first and only, not the females, children who are in ours, former thugs who dropped the ball, nor the community. I totally agree. Um, Moses Jenkins asked a question. Shout out to Brother Moses. What does economically improvisational mean? Did you say that? Right. Economically improvisational. Uh, essentially, what I was illustrating was how we can use certain things that are kind of inherent to us, kind of like our knack for Oh, I know I can go out there and get it. You know, I got multiple streams of income, different ways of going about getting money. What I was basically saying was that that could be a part if we decided to. That could be a part of the development or the redevelopment of uh, an empowerment culture of black men, using that as our strength, uh, looking at us being able to figure out different ways to be able to take care of ourselves. That's essentially what I was illustrating by saying that. Okay, okay. And let me shout out Brother Ron Eccles. Man, hopefully he'll join the panel tonight. Excellent guest, smart and well thought. Thanks to that, brother. He came on. He had a really good uh, uh, show the other night. I was trying to get on his show and didn't work out. But let me, let me so you talked about the managed expectations part, uh, Brother Wayman. What's the other partition that you feel that can create this empowerment culture for the brother? Well, I think there are a few key things that that just really jumped to mind with me. And that is, you know, in the last show, we talked about what we can do as individuals, uh, building up our self-esteem, building up our confidence and also building up our competence and how those three elements could almost serve as a catalyst for us being able to experience all sorts of personal successes. And I think that I wanted to kind of keep that same format, you know, put a constraint on what we can be doing to actually see some sort of forward movement. And this time I wanted to touch on three things that I think would be really key towards an empowerment culture for black men, which to me would be resourcefulness, collaboration, and edification. So those are the three things that overall I kind of wanted to uh, touch on this evening. So resourcefulness, networking, that was, what was the sorry? What was the second one? Right, right. The second one was a uh, collaboration, but networking definitely a part of being resourceful. Okay, so referring from this and then edification, let's kind of start with with um, 
resourcefulness. Um, when you say resourcefulness, resourcefulness, what do you really mean when you say that? Really, it means that each black man looks at increasing what he knows. It looks at increasing who he knows and what he can do in order to share something of value with other black men. Okay. So it's essentially, you know, using an illustration like summertime is coming to an end, but everybody brings a good dish to the picnic. That's basically what it's saying. Uh, and participating in an empowerment culture for black men, if you weren't bringing something to the picnic, you would feel embarrassed to kind of show up empty handed. So mm -hmm. it gives brothers a sense of duty. Um, say, you know, I, I, a lot of people don't necessarily agree with the black church. A lot of people don't agree with fraternities and the military and things like that for different reasons. But um, as much as people may not necessarily be into those entities, the thing that they're very good at is they're good at giving men a sense of duty about something. And I think that being resourceful gives men a secondary occupation or maybe, you know, a third occupation in life to where they actually establish it as a part of their purpose to help other black men. So when I think about myself and my own resourcefulness, I think about what can I do throughout the course of a year to be of a greater benefit to other brothers? Um, what areas can I show some progress in? Is there a field of study? that I'm already familiar with or where I can gain a deeper degree of knowledge in that. So then I can then share that with other brothers so that they can also be empowered as well. Um, can I help them be equipped with things that they need to thrive in life? Are there new connections that I've made, new associations that I've made that can enrich other black men, new relationships that can help other brothers get to where they want to go? Basically, you want to pretty much think of yourself as a black man as being a part of a universal mind that's working together to build itself as a whole mm -hmm. everybody is doing their job everybody's got something to share everybody has something that they can uh help another brother with because they're taking that self-investment and it pays off because after a while you're helping you know one hand is watching the other right uh even when it comes to things like our experiences that's a way to be resourceful thinking about some of your wins thinking about some of your losses maybe in relationships uh maybe economically being able to share that wisdom and that knowledge with other brothers so that they can have a support system. Because really, we don't really necessarily have anybody to turn to when we kind of sink low. You know, a lot of brothers, we, even when it comes to something like heartbreak, we don't always have people to turn to when it comes to something like that. And a lot of black men are suicidal, mm -hmm. on the verge of being suicidal, uh, deal with all types of depression for years, sometimes over that one L that they took with a female. Women normally have that. They can go hang with the girls and, you know, whatever they need, a, a thousand boxes of tissues and Chinese food to help each other. <laughs> they, they're there for each other. You know what I'm saying? But with brothers, it's kind of like we have to start getting to that place where, you know what, man, you ain't out here dealing with this by yourself. You know, you ain't alone out here. And I think that that's really important for us to be able to start earning and gaining trust with other brothers. So being willing to be able to share what we know. Uh, being able to advance ourselves is, I think, a really, really big component. Um, so that is how it would pretty much encompass being resourceful overall. Uh, let me let me do this. That's a great point. But uh, I want to get to another sub thing you talked about. But let me read this first here. Uh, Man of Tomorrow, he puts, if you're unwilling to put yourself first, you can never know how empowering it is to truly value your time over doing for others. That will not change. And I definitely agree. Brother Man of Tomorrow, thank you for the support, brother, for the ten dollar super chat. Um, let me let me kind of talk about this because you, you mentioned at the end in your resourcefulness uh, resourcefulness piece, earning mm -hmm. trust with other black men. Now, again, um, my my own experience with this uh, on YouTube it was definitely tough. Took me a long time, right, to to build you know what I have with the brothers here. Um, but I, I mean, I want to know your take on it. How is it if I were to ask you, um, you know, I want to build and earn trust with other black men. How is it that I can I can gain? this? Well, I think one thing is first, you should start where you already have uh, good levels of trust. Sometimes you don't have to necessarily go around the corner. You know, something can be right in front of you a lot of times. Some of the relationships that are already in place, your friends, uh, maybe, you know, a couple guys at the job colleagues i think more than anything it's about strengthening relationships that are already in place and then as you decide to bridge out uh you can do that as well 
a, you can do it as well, much more proficiently. So in other words, if it's a situation where you don't really know a brother and you want to establish some sort of relationship with him, I think it's important to be humble. Uh, I think it's important to be a giver first. Uh, those are things that make brothers feel actually relaxed. Okay, this person ain't just trying to get over on me or, uh, you know, because we're already going to have our guard up when we're dealing with each other pretty much for the most part, mm -hmm. especially when it's somebody who we don't know. Um, but I think being humble, uh, having a serve first, sometimes we don't even like the thought of serving another brother. Having a serve first mentality of what can I do for you? I see you out here moving. I see you out here working. I see you actually need some help. Maybe the brother isn't as... Uh, ambitious as you might be, but mm -hmm. having a serve first and what can I do to actually uh, bring some sort of resource to you is a is a big thing. And you got to have faith. Faith is a really big, big part of being successful in almost anything, because when you operate from a place of faith, you don't even really see anything failing. You, you look at it as though the good deeds that I'm out here doing, uh, because I am the sort of man that I am, I know that it's going to come back to me. I know for a fact, uh, without even taking place already, that these investments are going to pay off. Mm -hmm. I think that when you operate from a place like that, people can see that within you. And they're looking for people like that. Uh, that that's really what they're looking for. You know, when I think about with, with you and me uh, just recently knowing each other over the last month or two, uh, really, my approach when I was trying to basically establish a networking relationship with you was really, I see what O'Shea is doing. I need to present myself as somebody who's basically like, look, bro, I like what you're doing. This is sincere. I want to be a part of it. I didn't come and, you know, can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? It was, I see what you're out here doing. This is what I'm doing as well. What can I do basically to, to try to help you in some capacity? And then, you know, little by little as we're building, now we're able to earn trust, you know, a little bit more here, a little bit more there. And I think that you just kind of have to take those small steps and have a sense of belief that eventually it will actually pay off and that uh, you can actually design a rewarding relationship with another brother. And, and let me, me kind of build off of that, you know, because when you initially were coming in, nice to see you like, um, you know, on the super chat, you know, it wasn't like you wouldn't, you know, drop like millions of dollars or something like that, but you were consistent. And I, I was at least knowing that, OK, this this is a brother who I see supporting what I'm doing, not only is he telling me that I can see, you know, and like I said, man, it didn't take like a whole ton of money to get my attention. I kept seeing the brother, I saw him in the comment section and he reached out to me and said, hey man, you know, I, I do this. And um, I was like, you know what, let, let, let's uh, let, let, let's do a show. And the same thing happened with the brother. Um, what's the other brother, man, I just mentioned in Buffalo. What was his name? Uh, Deep in Thought. Deep in Thought, yeah. He wasn't even looking to do a show. But again, you know what I mean? I, I saw the sincerity and, you know, I was willing to be like, all right, look, okay, I, I can feel this person's genuine. Let me bring him on. Like, uh, there was a brother, and I, I, I mean, like, I found him a little bit, right? And he was like, man, I want to get on the show. This is a brother, you know, didn't even have, like, one subscriber, and you want to get on the panel with all these people and just, and just talk. A lot of brothers, like you said, they don't, they want, they don't, they, they, they're always looking to get on or do things and not even try to contribute in any way. You know what I'm saying? They want mm -hmm. to benefit from what you have, but they don't want to put anything into it. They, you know, right. I get so many emails and guys all the time. Man, I would love to do this on your stuff. I would love to do this. But again, as you said, they don't ever want to give anything first. You know what I'm saying? And then you wonder why you don't ever get where you need to go. You know, a lot of brothers are very like you know, that entitlement mentality. You know what I mean? And 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 that's to add on to your point. It doesn't take a lot of money to get on with a lot of brothers. Man. The brothers who are really um, genuine, like like Senator Truth. He hit me up. I would say the other day, like man, I would love to do this topic on your show. And sometimes, man, you will make. You will brothers will make a uh, time for you, you know, just to do things to help you. If you're showing that you, you respect what they're doing and you actually can contribute. And that's right. a key point that you're putting, man. A lot of brothers will get so much far with black men by not acting like a little ass bitch. And we have a lot of brothers out there 
who are necessarily black male haters, but they want to still benefit off of your stuff. But at the same time, they don't feel that, oh, I'm not going to give you shit. You know what I mean? And that's that kind of mentality is what's keeping us away from them. So I just wanted to add on to that point, but you're absolutely right. Let me let me uh, shout out to Brother Justice for All. Thank you, Brother Harry Mingo, for your super chat, brother, uh, of, of that. Uh, peace to the brothers focus and build knowledge and be great. Thank you so much. Let me let me ask you um, this next part about collaboration. Let's talk about that. So collaboration to me, I think this is a, a big thing that we can incorporate into our culture because collaboration gives black men the opportunity to pool their resources to work together while still being able to maintain their own unique individuality. And the reason I think this is important is because when you're developing a culture, it's really imperative to start where most of the people are in order to make it sustainable, in order to make it long lasting. So the thing about a collaboration is that collaborations are semi-formal. They don't glue you into dealing with someone as much as a formal partnership, but neither is it as casual as just kind of periodically dealing with somebody. It's basically action with a purpose and it takes a degree of dedication. Uh, and I'll give some examples of collaboration, but I really just want to illustrate the power of it. Um, when you think about two or more brands that work together for a project or a cause, sometimes in those situations, a collaboration works because where one brand is deficient, the other one is more proficient. And sometimes it can simply work because the creative energy and the similar value systems, or uh, let's say if it's a two businesses coming together, similar market share that they're going after, uh, they can kind of just find things to work together on to create some compound effects. Mm -hmm. But I think that black men have to look at ourselves as individual powerhouses. We have to look at ourselves as individual powerhouses of resources, of skills, of talents, of abilities, of knowledge, that when we come together with another black man who's making that, sound, that same self-investment, mm -hmm. then when we can fit that mold with them, we can make something together that's gonna be greater than what we could have done as an individual. Mm -hmm. So collaboration makes black men see each other's strengths. It makes black men operate from a place of recognition, a place of respect, and a place of appreciation. Uh, and the other things, is, too, is that collaboration keeps you honest. You know, when you think about basketball, you got five primary positions out there. Point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, center. If the shooting guard is throwing a bricksaw game, you know, it's going to be noticed that he's not doing his job. If the center is getting dominating the paint by a point guard, it's going to be noticed that he's not doing his job. So the thing that's cool about a collaboration is that it keeps everybody accountable. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's that's really important so that you don't just kind of get mixed up in there as, as you know, I'm, I'm dealing with this person, I'm working with this person, but we can't really calculate and give a metric as to what you're doing and the productivity that you're bringing to the table. Uh, so I think collaboration should be exciting. It should be enthusiastic. Uh, it's kind of like having two of your favorite artists, you know, back in the day, like a lot of rap records, hip hop records, when you have two of your favorite artists on the same track, you would get excited about it because you know what they both bring to the table. And it's like, man, they both get on this. This is going to be crazy. And mm -hmm. that's how I think black men have to kind of look at ourselves is what can we do? You know, brother, I see you over here working on a business project. I see you got a community based project. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you're doing some sort of volunteerism. Uh, maybe, you know, something as simple as, you know, what the kids went back to school. I see you over here trying to do like a backpack giveaway. Man, listen, why don't I put my money with you? We could probably double or triple the amount of kids that we could have influenced by doing that. And you're right. still being black male first. You're just choosing to operate with them from uh, something that's an initiative that they have in place. So I just think that collaboration is key because it, it helps black men to experience the makings of a mastermind alliance where two or more minds can kind of come together uh, to attain a specific goal. And it also helps us because it, Little by little, even though you're never going to get rid of the cancerous effects of jealousy and things like that. Right. I think that collaboration goes a long way in helping to minimize it uh, to a great extent. So I think it's really key. You know, think about what other black men have going on. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't even necessarily have to be something that you're going to directly profit from maybe initially or even at all. But if you can work with your brother on something uh, mm -hmm. that can be of a positive effect, find out a way where it's a good fit, where you can do some stuff with them. Uh, what am I? Uh, good friends. He has a chess club uh, mm -hmm. brother out of Buffalo, New York as well. Elijah Rollerson. He has a, a chess club for uh, youth. You know, um, I know we got to actually get together and do some things, but I think about it like that. I'm like, I don't even know any other brother who's locally operated a chess club for kids. Mm 
Mm-hmm. That's something where I can help him on that. He can help me on certain things. So right. collaboration, I think, is really key moving forward. Let me, let me ask you this. For, so for some of the brothers, right, and I know this is being more common in, the, in this sector of YouTube, brothers collaborating, especially on you know my channel. I'm, like, really big on it. But some brothers are just not the – the collaborating type, like Alan Roger Curry said that when he was in um, Indiana, Indiana University School of Business, he took a test and it said that, you know, he is a, a great person to work by himself individually. I think a lot mm. of black men um, have just been trained to kind of be more like tigers and like lions. Um, mm. what, what suggestions would you give to brothers who are so independently mindset it or have an independent mindset versus wanting to you know get out there and collaborate or, or maybe they don't know how um how were you able to you know I guess you, individually you had your own blog before in 2012 um how did you get into the spirit of of of, of this collaboration mindset where you are now if you can use yourself as an example i definitely can um and you know what i think I'm really much more of that sort of person just by design. I'm really like the type that can just go and do my own thing and not be bothered. And just, you know, I can wear 50 different hats, do it all myself. And that's cool. And a lot of times, you know, when it's all said and done, when you're working on something anyway, you're going to be ultimately responsible for it. Um, And I think that a part of the reason why I used to not really be the, the most collaborative person is because I didn't really trust that in a collaboration with another person, that my ideas would be able to come to fruition the way that I wanted them to. Um, that was that was definitely a big thing. And also just not finding the need. You know, I can do it myself. Uh, so that's great to be able to be that, that sort of independent person. But I would say maybe something you can do is just look at it as a challenge to yourself. See if you're able to collaborate with other brothers who might be very different from you, uh, who might not share a lot of the same ideas and Look at it as here it is that I can actually sit down with this man doesn't really necessarily have the same background, but we could put our two brains together and there's something that we share. That's a common value system. So if you start with the end goal of well, we both know that we want to do this right, we both know that this is the thing that we're actually trying to attain. Well, even though we have two different approaches, maybe towards it, if, if the approach isn't so conflicting, try it as a challenge to yourself to see on small scales how you can actually collaborate with other brothers and you don't have to necessarily try to force it. If it's not there, it's just not there, you know, but in the meantime, you could be building yourself up in your skill set so that when you do find a collaborative effort uh, that can come your way, that is fitting, then you'll be prepared to do so. But one of the things I think that's beautiful about collaboration is that it makes you selfless. Uh, it makes you the best way to put it I'll, I'll put it like this. There was a few years ago, there was a local art festival that I was a part of. Uh, I was on a, a committee for a lot of different personalities, a lot of different agendas, a lot of different intentions on how they wanted things to be done. What ended up happening is that not one person got everything that they wanted. Everybody probably got about 10 percent of what they wanted. But at the end, the whole thing actually came together. And sometimes you have to have that spirit about you that says, even though things are not going to go completely my way or the, the way that I want them to go, I understand that there is more power. And it's also a stellar example to be able to show, look at what can happen when we can all work together. So sometimes it's just about not necessarily that you don't have the ability to do it yourself, but just being willing because you actually believe that something greater can come from a collaborative effort. And also at the same time, you want to demonstrate uh, a certain example among your peers. It's a chance for everybody to shine. It's a chance Mm -hmm. for everybody to, to be able to show what they can do. And that is something that's going to go a long way in actually building trust over time. Okay. No, I, I definitely I definitely agree. Let me get to the part about the edification because I'm kind of um, interested to hear what you said about the edification piece. Why, why do you think edification is, a, is, a, is important in developing the empowerment culture for back then? Well, this ultimately might actually be uh, the core of it because edification in our terms is black men building up each other's spirit. Um, We can do this in a lot of different ways. We can do it by recognizing each other's strengths through mutual encouragement, by being empathetic, 
by celebrating our heroes, our champions, our leaders within the community of black men. Uh, edification basically enables every black man to pretty much be the man. Culture is supposed to contain values that resonate with the people within that culture. And I think edification plays right into the black man's social desire for having validation among our peers. Now, sometimes when I use that word validation, I know immediately some people may look at that as a negative because they might say, well, I don't need validation from anybody about anything. But mm -hmm. that's not really true. Uh, validation at its core really just means that you're viewed as being credible. And if you're a social person, to some extent, in some operation of life, you're doing something for some type of validation. And basically, when you're edifying other brothers, is letting them know that you have a solid reputation is letting other people know that you have a solid reputation so when you bring them around other circles you know basically it's, it's showing that you're an official dude we know that we need that as black men our reputation is very important so i think edification is key because when you can recognize somebody's strengths when you can mm -hmm. celebrate these people uh for example even this this morning with you you know i jumped on before i ran to work did, did my two dollar bill make it rain in the super chat for a second? I to work. <laughs> and uh, and I remember, uh, you know, your big shout out today. And I said, man, that actually sparked my entire day hearing O'Shea give me recognition in that way. And he may have not even known necessarily in that moment that that was what he was doing, but it actually did. And we have to have that sort of spirit of edifying each other, bigging up each other, building up each other's spirit. Um, one thing that I think about is having a desire to be honorable and to honor each other as well. I think mm -hmm. it goes a long way in edification. Um, when you think about it, when I say celebrating our heroes, you're a hero, O'Shea. You know, you built a platform for yourself and also for other people that is basically having international influence. That's heroic. We don't have to turn on a TV or pop in a CD or whatever and hear a rapper or hear or look at a basketball player or look at a uh, a book, you know, from a thousand years ago or a hundred years ago of everybody who was powerful. We got our heroes right here. We have heroes right here who are doing things every day. And it doesn't necessarily matter if you're, you know, legendary on YouTube. You could be the brother that's actually going to work every day. That's right. taking care of yourself. That's setting an example. But being able to see those strengths in other brothers, being able to uh, lift each other up, being able to recognize each other, I think is really key. And so edification is is huge, man. Um, it's not something that we get enough of among black men. Sometimes we don't want to share the shine. But imagine where you can walk into a restaurant and you see a whole group of black men, maybe moderately priced. Uh, and the only thing that you see them arguing over is who gets to pay the check. You know, because they're so honored. You know, you know what I'm saying? Because they're so honored to be among other black men. And uh, I think when we can see the, the strengths in others because we see them as a reflection as ourselves, edification becomes easier. And it also, again, helps us to bond for brotherhood as well. No, I, I, I definitely agree. And that last one, the, I, I, the C, um, <laughs> brother's doing that. Because the first person who offered a pay, he no, no, man, go ahead on. Yeah, okay, you got it, you got it. All right, I got to get it next time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> And you know how it is, you know, you walk in, the first thing is, oh, guys, together or separate? That's the first thing the waitress asking. You know, black people, oh, put, put mine separate. You know, it could right, be right. a $5 cup of soup. But, you know, if you just have that sort of spirit, you know, people around going to understand, they're, they're going to look at that and wonder, like, man, what is going on? What are they doing? Who are those brothers? They're going to want to be a part of that. So it's also an attractive thing, you know, because social recognition is really big. I remember uh, a couple months ago, you mentioned on a show, it was one of the uh, the big Sunday Rumble shows and you were mentioning how, you know, you can do a lot of work out here in the black community. It's almost like you don't even get uh, kind of rewarded or, or pat on the back about nothing. And it was mm -hmm. kind of like a, a response to you where it was like, well, you know, you don't do it to get pat on the back. But at the same time, recognition is important, man. You know, right. it, it serves it serves a big it's a big incentive as to why people do things. Um, in the first place, you know, people ain't just doing stuff just to do it all the time. I mean, not saying everything has to come with some sort of look at what I'm doing, but you want to know that your efforts are appreciated. Right. And so um, I think that black men just having that that normalcy of, listen, man, this brother right here, sharp guy, very well rounded, very educated. This is what he's doing. When you can speak to other people about another black man like that, it builds him up. Exactly. And it's just something that can strengthen our culture. 
And, and that's that's absolutely the truth. And and you know what? I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. And that's what we try to do. Um, at least me myself, when I bring on a guest, uh, you know, a lead off guy, I try to build that brother up and big him up as much as possible. Um, based off of what you said, because we don't see that a lot in our culture. You know, we don't um, try to appreciate our brothers and even try to bring up, you know, brothers that have, you know, great skills. Like anybody listen to you, I mean, you, you can have a channel just as big as anybody else's. But, you know, again, we have so much talent out here that we don't want to appreciate the brothers out there, shout out to Brother Moses Jenkins, guys like that who have skill sets and can help us do different things, but we don't bring our brothers into the the conversations because and we don't appreciate them for when they want to come on and do things. You know, we we, we don't tell them, thank you, Brother Wayman Brown, for bringing this topic, or thank you, Brother Wayman, for bringing the topic about rebuilding the uh, indestructible black men. When black men are giving us their time, we, we got to be more appreciative and let people know that we appreciate them. Don't always even take money or something like that, man. Just things like, you know, you recognize me. Sometimes I just get an email. Hey, bro, you know what? I watch your show. You know, guy, don't even done it. But you know what? Your show takes me through my day. I had some severe depression I was going through. But after listening to, you know, you and the Brother Peel or the Sunday Rumbles or some of the shows, man, I actually got, you know, got back. I started my business. I'm doing very well. You know what I mean? Those are the kind of things that we like to hear from our brothers out in, in black America. And it really makes us feel good. And like I said, we want to tell black men that we are, that we are appreciative of you brothers too, because we know that a lot of people don't tell you that, you know what, I appreciate you for what you did. Your mama don't tell you that your wife don't tell you, your girlfriend don't tell you that. So we have to be as the brothers saying, building our culture, to start acknowledging things that you see other black men doing and kind of build on just that. Um, you guys might always hear at the end of some of my shows, I said, when you see a black man and you see him at Popeye's or you see him at a car lot or something, he has a nice car, compliment the brother. Tell the brother he has a nice car. Tell the brother he looks nice today. You know, no homo. Tell the brother, um, man, you know, the uh, those are some nice shoes. Tell the brother, you know, I, ho I hope you get to interview. All of these things or something that you can do when you see a black man, you don't have to just walk past him. If you make eye contact, you can speak. You can say hello. How are you doing today, brother? You know, good to see you. You know, um, you know what's your name? Things like that. Well, bro, I hope you have a good day. You know, hey, bro, how you give them the, the head nod like we best do. That actually helps a lot of brothers. Just, just to, just to know that you know you you will be surprised how many brothers will be gravitated towards you. And wanting to work with you with that with the right attitude. And a lot of times, uh, Brother Wayman, I feel that this whole networking with the collaboration piece, there's so many talented black men. And shout out to Brother Odinga Mobuta. I met him in Brazil. So many talent, that's a talented brother right there, too. Brother making a lot of big moves. We push our brothers away. Because we don't believe that black men actually have a network or they actually know what they're doing. So because of our own shitty attitudes towards other black men who don't think that we can do shit, that's a brother that might be a hiring manager or know somebody that can get you into the industry, or that brother might be making $300,000 a month and could be able to help you do something. You know, he might know something about Salesforce or whatever. And we cut our own water off in our own communities because just what you're talking about, that shitty attitude um, alluding to the piece that, as black men, we don't want to create the culture of even just saying hello or even speaking to one another. And I just, you know, that I believe is very imperative, brother, in, in this empowerment culture. So I, I, I'm thankful for that, that you mentioned you were kind of hitting on those points. Definitely, bro. Um, you know, I, I think that that's, that's very much so uh, critical for us uh, moving forward. And, you know, another thing I wanted to just kind of touch on with the collaboration piece is that the thing that's kind of cool with a collaboration is that it allows black men to compromise with each other and to be flexible. And you get a chance to help another person reach his goals. Mm -hmm. I think that's the one of the key ingredients that we have to understand is that when you help someone do something that they're intending to do, now they have a reason to trust you. Now they have a reason to have a different degree of respect for you. Now they right. have a reason to have some sort of a bond or a sense of brotherhood with you because 
you're actually making a, a, a sacrifice that's also an investment into them when you didn't even have to. Now it becomes a shared venture. Uh, so it doesn't have to always be something that's so formal. Um, you know, in, in, when we think about politically, when we talk about politically moving forward and putting together initiatives, if you can't collaborate on something small, what are the odds that you can eventually form some sort of a council or, you know, do something as big that's going to be affecting us nationally or that we're all going to be on one accord on, on something like that? You know, even if we had a city right now that was just a completely black ran city, top to bottom, every type of business social civic opportunity that you can ever imagine if the relationships aren't in place it really doesn't even make a difference basically you know you can have that mall you can have those employers you can have all these different things going on paper but you have to make it come together just like in a team it's not just about having the skilled players at these positions in the spirit of football season it's not just about having that all-star wide receiver it's about can you make it all come together under this offensive coordinator under this defensive coordinator can you make all the pieces come together so you have to have relationships in place in order to make any of these things happen long term. No, no, I, I definitely, I definitely agree. Um, let me do this, guys. Two hundred or twenty-five people watching right now. Um, we'll open it up in, just, in about a few minutes. But uh, guys, do me a favor and like the video. I appreciate the brothers who are supporting them with the super chat. Thank you so much uh, for the brothers that do, um, and for brothers that are just watching. Thank you also. Hit the like button. Let us know that you like the uh, the video and continue to share. What are some of the other points that you wanted to, uh, to, 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 to touch on? Brother? You know, um, kind of bouncing off of what I just mentioned politically. Uh, I know that's always something that comes up, you know, especially on your channel. You know, what are we going to be able to do moving forward when it comes to that? I definitely believe in the need for black men to eventually get to the tangible things, the material things, the physical things that can help us to fortify our physical survival. And eventually, to be able to have some type of formal governance over ourselves as any group needs that in order to have a lasting fighting chance to, to thrive generationally. Um, and to me, making that a possibility begins with black men, again, strengthening our current relationships and repairing the failed ones that can be repaired. Uh, I do think it's important for black men to have a political influence from, you know, from a municipal standpoint all the way up uh, over things that affect us in mass. But, to a greater extent, I think that it's time for us to operate as a cohesive group, uh, even within the present legislation, even with the way that things are. Because if we can stick together when things are not in our favor, mm -hmm. we can kind of be our own internal army within a system. Think about how much more we can do after we've actually established those bonds and those relationships. Uh, so I think having a sense of togetherness is enough of an initial major first step that right. can actually kind of keep us occupied for a while. You know, and so. Uh, really, man, I'm just excited because uh, an empowerment culture to me, as far as my place in it, I look at it as uh, having personal accountability towards my own self-development and having sincerity towards and grouping other brothers' interests and also our group's interest and having a belief that as long as I'm doing my thing and I'm putting forth the effort and I'm investing, as long as I'm having that a win for one is a win for all mentality, as long as I'm, you know, basically trying to be a resourceful brother and building up other brothers trying to connect where I can, then eventually it's going to be able to help is eventually it's going to pay off. You know, eventually we're going to be able to see some forward progress. So those are signed, kind of some of the uh, key elements. So Shay, I wanted to touch on this evening. Okay. 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 So man,